Today, we are going to learn all about confidence from the CEO of the American Confidence Institute. And we're also going to discuss her new book, Confidence is a Choice, Real Science, Superhero Impact. American Confidence Institute's CEO is teaching you to be comfy, calm, and in control. She's a powerhouse endorsed by Harvard, Wharton, and Yale. She's taught hundreds of thousands, confidence at scale. Today, she's talking about her brand new confidence book, Real Science, Superhero Impact. Take a look. I'm honored and privileged. She's joined us today. Alyssa DeVere, welcome. Take it away. Welcome so much, Ooh, Alyssa. I loved it, Michelle. <laughs> but imagine that the brain, in, in this very simplistic way, the the brain stem, which is back here behind your um, kind of like attaches to your spinal column, is really the part of your brain that's focused on helping you survive. It's the part that takes care of everything from breathing to heart rate. And as we're sitting here, Michelle, and we're chatting. You know, we're not focused on breathing or our heart beating because our brainstem takes care of that for us. The prefrontal, on the other hand, is really where you're all, all your smarts are, your intellectualness is. So where you're doing calculations and correlations and you're really uh, trying to make decisions all happens up here. So when an incoming situation, we call it a trigger, basically something that may be of danger, it could be something physical, so you're about to get, you know, hit it driving along the road, or it could be an emotional danger. Somebody's about to throw an insult your way. Mm. That part of your brain, the amygdala kind of says, oh, uh, uh, incoming danger. And it makes a decision that amygdala moment can be almost uh, recognized, if you will, by that, that reaction we have that we get angry, like, or we get frustrated, or we feel uh, all of a sudden that somebody's trying to hurt us, you know, like diss us. So all those emotions that all of a sudden something happens and you're going, oh, that's that moment that you can kind of capture it. Now, one of the easiest tricks you can do is not just capture it, but go, <sighs> because when you do that, you take a deep breath, you are basically hijacking that amygdala, slowing things down, right? You had us do that before we got on air, right? It was like, right? And th in that regard, we have taken control of our brain because breathing is something our brainstem normally does. But when we tell our prefrontal breathe, or we're basically putting all the control center back in the front of our head. So it gives us the ability to say, okay, time out, let's figure this out and then respond. Don't react, respond. And I'm going to read from page 78 of your book because she describes instead of reacting, taking a moment, breathing in, you know, and learning how to think about it as, quote, while it's not always easy or automatic, confident people consciously take time to think. They don't react until their prefrontal cortex is ready. They know to pause and ponder before acting, reacting, or interacting. This seemingly simple act of control allows them to consult their values, needs, and wants. So they ensure their behaviors are within those guidelines. And that is so important for business. How does this relate to business you know, decisions? Because of course a company or a entrepreneur needs to know, you know, what are my company values? What are my mission? You know, and to get to that mission, this is what I need, this is what I want. How does how does that play out in business? Oh my goodness. It, you know, it happened to me two minutes before we got on air. I had um, one of my clients. I'm doing some consulting work for them. And they were asking me to come to this meeting that is like, has been a recurring meeting and it's like an hour and a half and it's just, it's interesting and it's nice and it's, but it's not what I would consider mission critical. Mm -hmm. And so I said to this client, I said, I'd really like to push this to the following week. Uh, there's these other things we've got to get done and I've got to put my available time and energy into those things. And I got a really nasty email back. Right. And it was like, well, I can't believe that you can't give me half an hour. And it was like, no, it's not that I can't give you half an hour, but my values, needs and wants are I want to get the priorities done and I value my well-being and I'm not willing to work yet another um, overnight shift or weekend for you. <laughs> right. So I'm saying that in my head, but <laughs> back in a way that says, 
no, this is why we're doing this. And this is what's important. So we're going to do it this way. And so again, I can act more confidently, not apologize, not cow down, because mm -hmm. I weighed in with my values and needs and wants.